Nelson Mandela embodied the 20th, centuries in, the 20th century in South Africa and in the world in many more ways than people think. He did so with a group of comrades who were giants. He himself came from a royal house as a Victorian old gentleman, uh, or young gentleman at that young firebrand, Victorian firebrand, from a royal house. Um, but he worked with the son of a peasant, Awar Tamba. And if there's one document that people, every person should study again today, and every young person should study, it's a thing that I read first as a political document. It's his speech from the Ravonia Dock. His speech, and that speech gives you an understanding of history, of economics, of politics, of law, of strategy, of theory. And all that was founded on the ethic that all human beings are born free and equal in rights and dignity. I remember in 1980, as we were preparing the 1980 school boycott, giving out Release Mandela leaflets. And that was the founding of the Release Mandela campaign. At that time, what Mandela represented, particularly to boys who had absent fathers, most African children's fathers were migrant workers. Many working class children also had absent fathers. And to us, the people on Robben Island, particularly Mandela, represented the, the ideal of an absent father. Not the, the absent father that is an absent father, as we know them, but uh, the ideal absent father, the one that is fighting for everyone, that is there, and, and, and so on. From about 1985, after the foundation of the UDF, but from about 1985, through to 1990, none of us could have believed that there was going to be a, no a negotiated settlement. People like myself who were inside the country who saw the killings, the beatings, the brutality, never, never, even at the last minute before Mandela was released, I said, no, 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 they'll release everyone else, they'll never release Mandela. But the fact was that they did. And the four years, or the three years, from 1990 to 1994, April 1994, the four years, were the most violent in a certain way. Because you had the violent criminal elements of Inkata massacring people, both innocent people and ANC members, both ANC supporters and people who were just broad supporters of liberation. And throughout that period, the armed white state, together with its homeland lackeys, now all in the ANC, throughout that period, Mandela managed to keep all of us together and not to go back to the trenches and the bushes. He kept everyone together. Unlike anyone, the world, the ANC and all of us had built a myth around him that he was invincible. And that gave him the stature to play like a Bonaparte between the different factions of the ANC and between classes within the country, between groups within the country, between the government and the liberation movement. So he really elevated that. And of course he was supported by great people like Joe Slovo, Chris Hani. He was supported by Sal Ramaphosa and so on. So we must remember these things, Dalla Omar, Farida Omar, all those people, we must never forget them as we speak of him and his, the loss we have in relation to him. I'm one of the people who subscribe to the view that the presidency of Mandela was the best presidency this country has ever had. Not a perfect presidency by any stretch of the imagination, but a presidency that was built on openness and it was time of lively debate, serious discussion, the best policies. If you look at our national AIDS plan of that time, it was the best policy document in the world on AIDS, on rights, on access to medicines, on bringing the price of ARVs down, 
It had all that in it. Under Mandela, his presidency, and I'm talking as a gay man, under the Mandela presidency, the Labor Relations Act, the Basic Conditions of Employment Act, the National Schools Act, the um, Medical Schemes Act, the Employment Equity Act, all included sexual orientation. First time in the world, almost full partnership rights. In July 2002, um, I got a call and Jack picked up the phone and said to me, Mandela's on the phone. I said, you're lying. I picked up and he said, uh, hello, Zaki. Uh, you must take your pills. I am going to come see you to tell you to take your pills. And I said, how are you, Matiba? Uh, I am fine, but I'm worried. You must take your pills. So I said, uh, Matiba, you most welcome to come. And the tech comrades will be delighted to meet with you. And for me, when he came to meet with TAC, it was a stand greater than his speech at Ravonia. Because when he made the speech at Ravonia, he had the ANC and the world behind him. He had the ANC and the world behind him. He was together with comrades of equal stature. Great human beings. All prepared to give their life. When he took his stand against Mbeki, in terms of public stands, his was the greatest. When he put on an HIV positive t-shirt, a few days before the ANC Stellenbosch conference, which re-elected Mbeki as president for a second term in Kailicha with people living with HIV. He saved millions of lives. Mandela's support for TAC turned the tide because it meant in 2002, at the end of 2002, we were going into 2003, which was going to be the year before the election. And with Mandela's support, they couldn't see tens of thousands of people on the streets. And in this year that Madiba dies, we celebrate 10 years of a treatment plan. We celebrate nearly 2 million lives saved, a declining infection rate, the world's, historically the world's largest chronic disease program in the world. And he made an enormous contribution to that. Nelson Mandela took remarkable stands in his life. He wasn't afraid to speak truth, like the AIDS example showed, like his stand on Zimbabwe showed, and like his stand on the Nigerian military showed. He wasn't afraid. And when, when George Bush went to war and Tony Blair supported him, he, I, I think he called Tony Blair Poodle of, of George Bush. So he wasn't afraid to speak the truth. All his life was built on the understanding that every human being is born free and equal in dignity and in human rights. And he was prepared to give his life for it.